my lovelies, welcome to my channel. Here we are again, getting ready to teach you guys how to do another spell. Now, this can be done for those of you that have a feeling, perhaps, that uh, someone is being manipulated or someone is being worked on. Um, you can do this for yourself as well, definitely. But the intention, um, the intention behind this is primarily for those that, uh, as an example, you have a son, you have a daughter, you have, you know, brothers, sisters, and you may feel like they are being perhaps not guided in the best way possible. Perhaps people around them are not necessarily good intentional people, and you want to kind of help them. You want to assist them in being able to find their way back to you, um, not necessarily like, you know, this is <laughs> primarily for those that you feel like someone you love has been uh, being taken down the wrong path, basically. And they just don't want to listen. You try to give them advice. They, there's just no way that they will. It's like your words fall on deaf ears. And at this point, you don't know what to do. This spell is particularly for those situations. Now, this could be done to your girlfriend, to your boyfriend, to your mother, to your dad, to your sister, um, to your brother-in-law, your sister-in-law. It doesn't matter. Um, you can do this to anyone that you genuinely have love for and that you genuinely want them to be purified and cleansed. Um, I get asked all the time on my social medias, for those of you guys that follow me on Instagram or TikTok um, or my Facebook page, um, I get asked often, you know, my son, my daughter, they're, you know, going down the wrong path or they've been dating this person and it, fe it almost feels like they are like zombies, um, you know, going or following their lead, et cetera, et cetera. It's like, and it happens, right? It happens and you want to make sure that they are not being influenced. And if they are, this will definitely break. Um, this will definitely break that and they will be empowered by their own power and by their own guides. Okay, so this is the reason why I say it's very important that you have a genuine love to the best of their interest. Okay, this is not to do it because you don't like the girlfriend, because you don't like the boyfriend, because you don't like, you know, uh, the person that your sister's dating. You don't like, it's not for that. It's not intended for that. If you do this, um, it can backfire if you're doing it with wrong intentions and their closeness will become closer. Um, this is assistance from the spirit realm to help them, guide them, uh, because there is genuine concern for them. I hope that makes sense, and I'm making it as clear as possible. Like I said, this is a purification and a cleansing that will break any type of witchery. Um, that has been done on someone else without their uh, consent, okay? So I'm making it as clear as possible. Like I said, do not do this thinking that just because you dislike someone, um, this is primarily because you're concerned about their, you know, mental state, you're concerned about their safety, you're concerned um, they've been acting odd and different and you feel like they may be influenced then this is what, this is the type of spell work you do, all right? I'm gonna break it down, what do you need? You need a bowl or a plate, you're going to need a white candle, you're going to need Florida water to cleanse uh, the candle, incense, you're gonna be needing some copal, okay? Resin. Now, why are we using copal? Because, well, it is used for higher spirits, for guardian angels and archangels, okay? We feed this as an offering to them. Now, you can use copal, you can use frankincense or sandalwood, okay, or myrrh. 
but um, primarily I'm using this because I am working with Saint Simon. Saint Simon. Um, again, you can use frankincense, myrrh, sandalwood, or copal. Okay. Now you're going to need some type of rose or flower. You can pick any color that feels uh, that you feel very connected to, or any color of the deity or spirit that you're going to be working with, okay? I'm using yellow, obviously, because I'm doing this through my Saint Simon, and that is his color, yellow. Um, make sure to have a protective candle when doing this before you even cast, before you even begin, okay? So like I said, you're gonna put the resin, the incense, whatever it is that you're using, Make sure to state, I offer this to the spirits. I offer this to the higher spirits, the archangel of, and you're going to mention their name. <sighs> Spirit guides and ancestors, please step forward in this working that is about to commence. Okay. You're also going to be needing a carving tool as you will be making, as you can see here. You're going to be making four holes on the candle. Okay, you're going to be needing some salt. Salt is used for pur purification purposes. You're going to use some type of oil. It could be tranquil oil. It could be peace or harmony oil. And you're going to be needing a cup of water. As you guys can see here, we already have that. And why? Because we are offering this again to the spirits that I'm working with. Now, that is all you need. Aside from, <laughs> excuse me, aside from a pencil, if you're using a pencil, make sure that it's a number two. There's a purpose behind it, you guys. Um, or you can use a marker. We're going way back because we are, uh, it may seem simplistic, but it's a very powerful ritual to take place. As you guys can see here, the incense is already dancing. Um... A symbol to me that my spirit and my saint is here with me okay now aside from that we're going to be using some rattlesnake root this is a purifier this is a protecting root this will reveal to you the people that are ill-intentioned or people that are not good for you and it will also keep you protected. It will keep you against any harm. And we're gonna be using as well some protection powders here that I personally make. Okay, so what do we need? You're also going to need a picture of the target or the person that you're doing this to. For safety, <coughs> safety and secrecy, I already have that there, but let's just pretend. We're going to put the picture, we're going to get parchment paper, and you're going to write down the person's first name. Let me use marker so you guys can see more clear here. We're going to use, I mean, we're going to put their first, last, their first name, last name, and date of birth. If you don't know their full last name, their full first name, or their middle name, or their date of birth, this is a spell that you shouldn't be doing. Okay, I'm going to keep it 100 with you guys. If you're not doing it for the right reasons, this will bite your ass back really quick, you guys, because we're not doing this with any spirit. You can work with any deity you prefer, you feel connection to, but you're invoking their archangel. All right, once you do that, you're going to turn it to the side and you're going to write down the petition. Now, in this petition, be open-hearted. As an example, you would write something like, I call upon the archangel of so-and-so. I ask you to be present in this work that is about to commence for the purification, the cleansing, and the breaking of any type of witchery that they may be under. And then you're going to sign. Okay? Okay? Once that is done, 
you're going to get whatever oil you prefer, protective oil, harmony oil, um, tranquil oil, um, hex breaker oil, whatever you feel called, we're going to be using here. Um, job breaker. <coughs> You're going to put it in each corner of the parchment paper. Okay. Once that is done, you're going to connect them, the four corners. You're going to then fold it. You're not going to fold it towards you. You're going to fold it away from you. One, turn it to the right. Two, turn it to the right. Three, away from you. Now, I have it bigger here because I'm covering the picture. But once that is done, you're going to put the parchment paper on top of the picture of the target or the person that you're doing this for. Okay? As you guys can see here. All right, let's move on. Once that is done, you're going to get the candle, the white candle. And it has to be a seven-day candle, you guys, because it is a process. You're going to get a carving tool, whatever it is that you're using. And you're going to make four holes, as you guys can see here. All right. Once you do that, you're going to get some Florida water. If you don't have holy water, if you don't have consecrated oil um, or water, you can use Florida water. You're going to cleanse it. Okay. You're going to rub it all over the candle going in the upward position. You're going to say, I cleanse. I cleanse, I purify, and I strengthen this candle for the working that is about to commence in the name of, and you're going to say the target's name or the person that you're doing this for. All right. Once that is done, what you're going to do now is you're going to pass the candle over the incense, and you're going to call on their archangel. I call upon the archangel of so-and-so. I ask you to be present, to help me, to guide me, to empower me in this spell that I'm doing for so-and-so, for their soul protection, purification, and cleansing. Once that is done, you're going to write the name of the person that you're doing this for on the candle, first name, last name, and date of birth. You can do it going down, or you can do first name, last name, and date of birth. Okay? I will skip that step for now because <laughs> private, um, to keep it private, keep my client's information private. Okay. Once that is done, you're going to add the oils that you're going to be using to the candle. I am using Hex Breaker. Okay. It's going to look like this. And go around it so that it can go into all the holes. Like I said, you're going to do four holes. I'm not sure if it's showing. Four holes. Um as a symbol of the cross, top, bottom, right, and left, okay? Once that is done, what we're going to do now is we're going to <coughs> add salt. Like I said, salt is a purificator. It's a purified to cleanse. You want to put it on your palm. You're going to grab the salt, rub it with your fingers, and you're going to put it on the candle, inside the candle, okay? You want to rub it with your fingers. Focused.
and the remaining you can put it on the parchment paper okay once that is done you're going to put the candle on top of the parchment and on top of the picture okay You're going to get the flower or the rose that you're using. Give me a second, you guys. And this is where you call on your deity or your guides. Saint Simon, I ask you to be present, to remain to my right, helping me and guiding me and empowering the spell that is about to commence by your name. Allowing the enemies known and not unknown of. Run at the mention of your name. Okay. So once that is done, Make sure to let your deity or your guides, the ones you're working with, let them know, I give you this flower, I give you this rose, <coughs> excuse me, um, as, an, uh, as a token of my love and appreciation for you. I bless and I give you this water so that you may feed upon it, so that you may strengthen the work that is about to commence. Once that is done, what you're going to do now is we're going to put some of the rattlesnake root. Very little, you don't need very much on the candle. And then we're gonna put some in the parchment paper. Rattlesnake root is extremely powerful you guys when we're talking about ceremonial magic when we're talking about purification and protection um it is amazing the power that it has um and it is very revealing uh it's it it definitely it's, cannot stress how powerful it is and only some spirits um work with rattlesnake root because it's extremely powerful like i said when i say spirits we're not talking about the good ones it's offensive the scent is offensive to them so that's how you know it's powerful okay all right so once that is done i wish you guys can smell this it smells amazing okay so once this is done what we're gonna do now is you're going to this is the point where you this is the part where you would fill up your uh, glass or cup whatever it is that you're using to offer the spirits water now i do want to make it very clear whatever when you're using <coughs> when you're using uh purification or cleansing tools make sure not to use as an example the plate do not use it for love workings. Do not use it for money workings. Only primarily use it for purification and cleansing or unhexing type of work. When you're offering something to the spirits, make sure that it, you don't put this back in your, you know, in your counter. Use this primarily <coughs> to offer the spirits water. It, crucial and very important, you guys. Um, I cannot stress that enough. Okay. All right. So once that is done, what we're going to do now is we're going to light the candle. When lighting the candle, um, you can call upon your spirit guides, your ancestors to guide you at this point. Call upon my wise and loving spirit guides. San Simón, gracias por estar aquí presente. 
pido que te mantengas a mi derecha y que traigas protección absoluta. Okay, so once that is done, this is where you would do your prayer. This is where you would call on your spirit guides to help you, to assist you, to empower and strengthen this cleansing. Um, as an example, you would say something like, I ask so-and-so's archangel to be, please be present, to help and assist in empowering, to know that I open my heart, my mind, and my spirit that I am good intentions for so-and-so. I ask you to remove any blockages in their life, anything that may currently be influencing them in a negative way. I ask you to break it absolutely and utterly. I ask you to empower them and bring their power back. I ask you to, oh, I just got chills. <laughs> like I said, when we're working with archangels, um, or spirits of very high vibration, you will immediately feel the shift of energy. You will immediately feel their presence. Um, they don't play around, you guys. So again, make sure that you're doing this wholeheartedly to the best of their interest. You don't want to do this because you're being spiteful or because you don't like someone. That is not your place, okay? All right, so once you have done this, what we're going to do now is, again, um, as an example, you would chant, this is no longer a candle. This is a representation of the mind, body, and spirit of so-and-so. Give me a second. This is no longer a candle. This is a representation of the mind, body, and spirit. Any energy that has been sent their way on a conscious or subconscious level without their permission, we rebuke it now. We break it, <clears throat> we release it, and we send it off to sender. May it be returned. Restore their energy. Restore their power. Make them whole again by your divinity and your presence and your power. So it is. All right. So once that is done, my lovelies, what you're going to do is you're going to keep this in your altar. You're going to keep it um, wherever it is that you do your workings or that you keep your workings. Always, 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 my lovelies, keep a watchful eye when candles are burning. Please be safe and be smart about it. You're going to let this uh, completely extinguish. Do not interrupt this candle. Um, if you must leave, as an example, and you must go somewhere for safety purposes, make sure to snuff it out. Do not blow it out. You want to snuff it out either with a spoon, <coughs> with a, um, with the sensor or, you know, with whatever it is that you're using. You can use, um, anything really. Uh, all you really need to do is, as an example, if you're using a spoon or, in a theme like this, you can just uh, put the steel close to the flame and it will completely go out. Um, you do not want to blow this, especially because, like I said, we're working with very high spirits. Um, it's a sign of disrespect. Uh, you don't want to do that. So once it has been completed, you can now ask your spirit guides, your deities, and Simon, thank you for being present. Thank you for being here. Thank you for making this happen for Thank you for bringing them protection. Thank you for making them whole again. Archangel of. Thank you for being present. Thank you for allowing us. Thank you for allowing us to be able to experience your power, your authority. To be able to break and remove anything or any attachments that keeps this person from being able to progress and move forward. Clear their mind, their body, their spirit so that they may be whole again. 
I thank you. And I ask you to return now to them, to give them guidance, to give them protection, and to bring peace and love to their heart. Once that is done, you guys, it is complete. What you're going to do is you're going to put this in your altar. You're going to allow it to completely extinguish. Like I said, if you must, must turn it off, snuff it out. Do not blow it out so that when you come back, you're able to light it again. Every single time you light it, make sure to ask or do a prayer over it, um, <coughs> making it clear that this is a continuation of the working that you're doing for so and so. Um, once you light it, like I said, and it is extinguished, depending on how quickly it burns out, it's speaking about the blockages that are either being removed or that are non-existent. As an example, if it blows, uh, not blows out, sorry, if it extinguishes rather quickly and it, you know, there's barely any wax left, it means that that person is in their whole power, meaning they are whole. They are making decisions because that's the decisions they're making. If it progressively burns out and it's slow and burning, it just means that as the wax is melting, so is so are they purifying and becoming whole again. So it is a process. Depending on how the candle burns, as an example, you guys already know, when you're doing a seven-day candle and the candle completely burns out, you can always read the candles, the candle burnings. <coughs> If there's no wax left, it is amazing. That is awesome. It means the petition was taken. It means that they are their energy is basically restored. They're whole again. Um, if there is any, you know, wax left, um, as an example, in the bottom, usually you'll see. Um, <coughs> and I've told you guys, if you're interested in how to read or interpret burned candles, there's a video on my YouTube channel that I already uploaded and you guys can look at that to give you some type of guidance. Okay, my lovelies, like I said, don't do this in a rush. Make sure to always center yourself and ground yourself when doing these types of workings. Um, and like I said, do not think for a second that you can outsmart higher spirits, uh, higher vibrational spirits. Um, like I said, do not be petty with this spell work, at least not this one. I have tons of petty ones, <laughs> but not for these. When we are working with archangels and guardians, it is very crucial and very important to be wholehearted about what you're doing because, like I said, there's no deceiving them. And they will strike down, uh, meaning it will bounce right back to you. Um, so do it <laughs> with good intentions um, and for the sole purpose of the higher good of that person. Like I said, if you're doing this for yourself, you would need the exact same ingredients um, you would need a picture of yourself and do this whole process. And like I said, doing with faith, knowing what you're doing and being centered will automatically give you results. There is the path to least resistance. Have faith and you will see things start to transform in your life. If you do this for yourself and, you know, it just seems like one issue after the other or blockages, you will start to notice that it dissipates. You start to notice that things start to move forward in a very positive way. After this is done and after the candle has burned out completely, what you're going to do is you're going to get the parchment paper and you're going to burn it. <coughs> you're going to burn, <coughs> excuse me, you're going to burn uh, the parchment paper. Do not burn the picture. You're going to burn the parchment paper and once it's burned out, you can toss everything out to the trash. You're good to go. Um, the flowers or roses, the offering and the water, keep it in your altar until spirit completely either consumes it, meaning in the aspect it completely dries out. And even at that, um, whenever I do work in specifically with my with my saint, um, I don't discard of anything. I use, um, I feel like they're more empowered and I use uh, these roses specifically for my workings. As an, as an example, if you're working with St. Simon and you're using a yellow flower, once it's dried up completely, you can use that um, for uh, ritualized baths or cleansings for yourself, for your physical body and spiritual body as well. So my lovelies, I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that if you try this out, definitely come back, give us your results, let us know how it went for you and what changes started to happen in your life. I want to wish you guys the very best. Stay tuned, my lovelies. Don't forget to subscribe. We have tons of new spells coming through for you guys. We'll see you guys then. Till then, bye-bye.